Today we are breaking down Martin Emerson Jr. and his stellar play against the Bengals. We have three plays. We have two coverage plays and a tackling play. And Ty, we're going to take this full. You got tag board. Steve, whenever you're ready, and we can let Tyvis explain to us why Martin Emerson Jr. did something so special against these Bengals receivers. Because he a dog, that's why. No, okay, so on this first play, he, obviously he's at the bottom of the screen right here. And when I saw this play, it reminded me of when I was with the Seattle Seahawks and I watched Richard Sherman go up against Brandon Marshall. And I actually text Sherm about it this morning because, I mean, he looks literally identical with, to what Sherm was doing. So I asked Sherm, you know, if you watch him, if you watch Martin on this, you see that, that he sees it's an outside release. He sees that he's getting a fade ball. But what's so impressive about it is that he gets his eyes right around, like immediately, which is something that you're not supposed to do. But the reason that Martin is doing it is because he understands that they're going to throw back shoulder fades. And I was, so I asked Sherm, I was like, when you play Brandon Marshall, you did the same thing. And he said, well, he knew that it was some type of signal that was being given that was a back shoulder. Oh, really? So, so Fitz Because he knew the back shoulder was coming. He knew he 100% knew that this was back shoulder because no corner plays it like, like he's almost playing it like it's a cover two type like, thing. He yeah. got his eyes back for the back shoulder and it was a back shoulder pass. So Martin Emerson is not just a good football player. He's smart. He, he's watching tape and he understands signals or something. Something was given that he paid attention to and caught to know that that's a back shoulder fade. He was on top of the route, which is perfect. When you, when you get an outside release, you want to immediately stay on top of the route, squeeze them to the sideline. The reason you squeeze them to the sideline is because now there's no route that he can run. If he runs a comeback, he's going to run out of bounds. It can only be a fade. So a lot of the routes is eliminated right off the bat from him just being on top of that route. He's using the sideline as a second Exactly. Defender, right? So he's able to get his eyes back and play it because Joe Burrow has nowhere else to go with the ball but a back shoulder. He plays it well, and he almost comes up with the interception. So that's, He acted to it like he was the receiver. Right. That's really. a, this is next level stuff. Like Martin Emerson is really making that jump. I love that. All right, so that was, whenever you're comparing him to your guy, yeah. that's, pretty, that's pretty high praise. Yeah, he knows something. Now what I wonder what Sherm said about that. He ain't me yet. I haven't so I didn't show him the clip. So what I oh, okay. when I texted him this morning about it, I said I'm breaking down this Martin Emerson clip and I said, Sherm, he looks exactly how you looked against Brandon Marshall. So what was it that you seen or why did you play Brandon Marshall that way? He was like he was like, Oh, they was giving these these signals that I that I picked up on um watching film and during the course of a game it's and I little and I kinda and I seen what it was. He was like he he like hit his leg or tap his foot or something like that. And I knew that that was back shoulder. So when I seen it, I played it like that. So wow. I said that it looks like exactly what it is. And this very next play that McNuggets is about to show, he does it, it he he almost do pretty much the same thing again, but he stayed on top of the route this time. And it's on T. Higgins. Boom, he on top, stabs, gets his head, he flips his head yeah, around and he's ready to play it. He knows. That's crazy. Because a lot of the, the he eliminated a lot of routes when he gets them put stab him off. See what people gotta realize about these fade routes, if you ever go to like a practice and watch him practice, it's this red line that goes up the side, that goes, it's like five, five yards away from the sideline. It goes all the way down the field. What's it for? It's for the fade route. So when receivers run their fade routes, the quarterback is taught to throw it on the red line. Oh, okay. So what it does is if you throw it on the red line, that receiver runs up that red line and he keeps space so he can throw it on the outside shoulder so the corner Gives can never get. Gives him to catch get, it and still right. inbound. So what a corner wants to do is you want to knock him off of that red line so it eliminates that sideline throw. He can't throw it because there's no space. So Martin Emerson, boom, stabs. You see double stab, and now they run it up the sideline, and he has nowhere to throw the ball. He gets his head around, and he plays the ball. So he, he just <laughs> – Martin Emerson is uh, – he, he's really been working on his press technique. And coming out of college, I told you all, the one thing that excited me is that he led the SEC in PBUs, past breakups. That was important because it told me that he knows how to play the football. Instinctively knows exactly. where it's going to yeah, be, too. Like, it's because that ball go up in the air and people get nervous. They slow their feet down. It's a lot of stuff that go into DBs that people don't know about. Like, when you turn your head and you look for the ball, instinctually you slow down. But he speeds up, he keeps running matches, and he plays the ball. So can, can you coach that, or is you just well, have that? you you got You can be coached out of it. It's something that you need to learn around middle school, high school. That when you turn your head around, you need to speed up because it's easy to slow down. It's not easy to speed yeah, up. Yeah, that makes like, sense. If, if you turn around and you slow down, that receiver is gone. Right. So 
he plays that right, gets his head, stays on top of the route, and he's able to play on top of the ball. He's on top of it, so the re- he's essentially the receiver of T. Higgins has become the DB. He's going to be a pro bowler, isn't he? He is. I like him, man. He, he got some really good game, man. Like I said, I challenged him right on this show. I sat right in this seat right here, and I said, Martin, they they putting you as CB3, but you are better than CB3. You should challenge to be CB1 after this season. And after one game... He definitely looked better at like number two right now. I get it. He looked well, like number two. Grades on the show yesterday, and, <laughs> and, and it was terrible. I, I didn't get it. <laughs> it was I didn't terrible. Get it. So I didn't get based it. off those PFF grades and this third play, Tyus, I picked for a specific reason. His coverage grade was extremely high. His tackling grade, not nearly as high. So the next play we're going to show is a tackling situation with Emerson. It was third and ten. Mm-hmm. The Browns get the stop. It's a gang tackle. Emerson's the first to the ball, Tyus. So mm-hmm. when we're going to play the play. Tell us, even though Emerson didn't make the tackle, in your opinion, did oh, he, he still uh, he did, did he what do he needed? His responsive, but did he, did yeah. he cover what he was expected to do in this situation? Mm-hmm. Because according to PFF, and we proved yesterday, not always matching up to the eye test. Yeah, he got dinged for this play in PFF, but maybe you see it as well positive. You can take the play, Steve. So when I watch the play, it is his play to make because it looks like they're in cover two. I can tell they're in cover two because you can see the corners hinging off. Hinging means that they're getting towards the sideline. So why this play is significant to me is that, okay, as a cor- let me give you all what the responsibility as a cover two corner is. As a cover two corner, you want you want to push your receiver inside. You want to send him inside and you hinge and you get, you get with. You want to get towards the sideline because you want to play that seven cut. Usually in these concepts, you get high lows. So maybe number two runs a seven cut while number one sits down in front of you. They want you to take that one in front of you so they can hit the seven cut behind you. As a corner, you have to play everything deep to short. So in this particular this particular route right here, as you notice, the tight end at the bottom, he chips the, he chips the D in and then he runs that little flat route. What makes Martin Emerson successful on this play, even though he didn't make the tackle, is that he shot the outside leg, keeping... Uh, contained on the ball, sending it back inside. Now, if he shoots inside and misses, he got that whole sideline to get extra yards. But if you're going to shoot and be aggressive, you want to so shoot outside force them inside. and force him inside like where he help. knew he had So, help. technically, you want him to get them. Obviously, you want him to make the tackle, but he still gets a plus because, boom, he did what he needed to do. Everybody's right there to make the tackle. And Tyvis, what's incredible about that is this happens as we watch it this time at warp speed. Oh, yeah. You He's are. making that decision in a tenth of a second to go outside leg. Well, I mean, at, so in this play right here, at, you get, obviously you got eyes on the quarterback. The quarterback breaks contained. He running out. You got your job responsibility. What you want to do is before you decide to go, you want to take one more peek behind you to make sure that you got enough depth that that quarterback don't, can't squeeze that ball behind you. But once that quarterback looks at that tight end, it's, it's essentially because he shouldn't have time to look here, look there, look there, right. and then go back. Especially with By the third line. read, it's, that's what it is. The, the rush is coming. He got to go. So after about four seconds on the play, you know where it's going. Be aggressive on it. Don't stop your feet. And he did exactly what he needed to do. He has what they call a quick processor, doesn't he? Yeah, you got to. You yeah. have to be very. You, it's, all, all of that stuff be happening within like, you know, just a flash. Split, the split to, and, like, and that's why they rep it. When they, people talk about read your keys, man, you you do more with just reading people's body mm-hmm. and their, what they're so, so supposed to do. When you they get really elite is when you can read the keys, but at the same time have ball skills to know where the football is and make plays right. like, that are unconventional. And those two things, you know, can come at the peril of each other. You can have great skill sets when you read your keys, but some people can't catch the football <laughs> or they don't have no awareness. Yeah, knowing what's happening is just half of it. You yeah. got to have the physical ability to execute. Yeah. No, and, and and the thing about it is these offenses are so good. At enticing you. That's the thing. You have to be so disciplined, especially in the secondary. You have to be so disciplined. Don't take the bait. And don't take the bait. And they do a great job. I mean, they it's like, please. They're going to sit it right in front of you. And you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to make this big time play. And the moment you take one step, he can hit you right behind you. Boom. Throw the How ball behind you. How good could the, the defensive backs of the Browns be kicked? Can they can they reach a status where mm. the, because in the late '80s, early '90s, it was you know Hanford Dixon and mm. Frank Minifield. They yeah. were the dogs, yeah. and they were widely regarded as the best defensive backs in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Can this group be that? I tell you what, when you look around the NFL, it's not 
a lot of guys that can say, especially as a trio, for you, I'm just talking corners and a nickel. Right. It's not a lot of teams that can say that at every spot they strong there. The Browns can say that, and they're pretty young. That's the best thing about it. They're all young. With Denzel being the leader, now Denzel's He's biggest challenge. He's the old man of the group now. Is, is his biggest challenge is staying healthy. But from a coverage standpoint, they're all pretty strappy. Like, they, they are really tight in coverage. And with that pass rush merits to that tight coverage, it's hard on these quarterbacks. And the safeties are coming too. Exactly. It's so hard. So if they continue to do that, the only problem that they had last game was tackling. And like I say, Denzel, I get it. You just came out of concussion protocol. You ain't trying to go back, so I get it. But I thought but everybody, the tackling was good. But everybody else, it was quick. They were to the ball. That's quick. what I'm saying. That's what you want. And that's a Jim Schwartz. You, you at trademark. least want them to be aggressive and make the aggressive moves. And if and at worst, if they miss, they helping out so well because they're missing and keeping contain on the ball. That's what you want. Great, great, def- great def- defenses tackle and contain the football and don't give up explosive. You do those three I, things. I, I you know can be they're a great all defense. important. I'm going to take the linebackers out of this mix because yeah, <laughs> the league has said you guys are just kind of partially on the plate. Yeah, let's just talk about defensive fronts mm-hmm. and defensive backs. Yeah, which one is most important? For a, for a defense See, dominance. They, the D-line, but they go hand in hand because you think about this, and you know who said it <laughs> to bring him up? G-Dub, Greg Williams said it. Yeah. Back when he was drafting Denzel, it was about to, it was, it was, everybody was like, get Bradley Chubb. The, yeah, the, I remember that. It was like, get Bradley Chubb with that pick. And he said, no, I'm going to get Denzel Ward. He said, the problem is Miles Garrett is this close to getting there but the quarterback's getting rid of the ball because somebody's open. We don't have nobody in the secondary to stop them. So they went and got Denzel Ward, somebody that gets tight coverage. Why? Because now that quarterback has to stop and think for a second, like, maybe I can't. And at that moment, boom, he's yeah. getting tackled. So that's what the difference a great is. great defensive That's why they go hand in hand. Can make a really good defensive backfield yeah. even better. Yeah. You think about Jacksonville and what was that, 2017 when they had Ramsey and A.J. Bouye and right, they right. led the league and all that stuff. They had a great pass rush. They had Calais Campbell, yep. had that great pass they rush, and they had that great secondary. And quarterbacks got nervous and started throwing yep. the ball up in the air. Yep. I'm so excited about this defense, I can barely contain it.